we truly appreciate your your presence in these hearings um primarily because from the beginning we've been saying that the state of our internet does have an effect on our economy and as our economy continues to grow under your leadership we also want to see how this can be enhanced further by having a more improved internet infrastructure in the philippines thank you sir maraming salamat po uh, assistant director uh, Tanyate is also with us. Magandang umaga po. Good morning. Uh, fr our friends from the private sector are here from uh, Smart Communications. We have um, Mr. Monis Berto. Good morning, sir. Magandang umaga po. Thank you for coming. Attorney Ibay, magandang umaga din po. From Globe, we have Mr. Manny Casino. Good morning, sir. Um, magkakadikit kayo ho dyan ngayon, ano? Parang nagkumpul kayo dyan, no? Sign of uh, good things to come, hopefully. Um, we have uh, Engineer Galia from uh, Pierre, of course. Um, Attorney uh, Francis uh, Kiko Acero and uh, Miss Mary Grace Santos from uh, Democracy.net. And of course, um, Grace is a policy researcher on the issue and has been one of our main resource persons as well. Good morning, Grace. Good um, We also have with us uh, Miss Angelica Sanchez. Uh, our friends from the LPP, who of course have um, always been with us through most of our hearings. Thank you for, for coming. Uh, Mr. Tam from the DILG is also with us. Magandang umaga. And we'd also like to greet uh, the National Chair of FICTAP, uh, Ms. Uh, Estrelita Juliano Tamano. Good morning po. Magandang umaga. All right. Uh, I'd like to begin the hearing by showing a few pictures no, of um, a visit I had uh, last week. And, you know, in policy work, no, sometimes po, um, we get mired in policy. No? Puro polisiya pinag-uusapan natin. In our case, puro mga numero, ilang megabyte, ilang kilobyte, ilang gigabyte, magkano ba per megabyte, and all of these things. And sometimes it's just good to remind ourselves the reasons why we're pushing for these advocacies and why we feel that this is really important for our country to address. No? So, if I could kindly show some pictures. Now, I was... Um, invited last week to visit a school in uh, Barangay Mira, Mia Rayon, Talakag, Bukidnon. Now, take note that to get to Talakag, you fly to Cagayan de Oro, or you can also fly to, no, we flew to Cagayan de Oro, and from Cagayan de Oro, we took a one-hour ride to Talakag. Talakag is actually quite a, uh, it's a very nice place. No? Napakaganda po ng Talakag. Marami pong agrikultura po doon. It's a uh, very rural area. No? But, but to be frank, uh, we were happily greeted by the local officials there. Barangay Miyarayon is actually one hour and a half from the center of Talakag, which is the municipio. Uh, and getting to Barangay Miyarayon took us one hour and a half. Isang oras at kalahati po. And uh, if you have some shots of the roads no, to get there, uh, hindi lang po off-road yung tawag doon. No road po yung, yung tawag ho doon. No? And uh, we were all in our 4 by 4s but uh, one of the 4 by 4s actually had a flat tire. No? Ganun ho ka, katindi yung daan, no? papunta po sa Barangay Mirayon. At the edge of Barangay Mirayon is the school that we showed you earlier. It's a Jesuit school, no? St. Therese School. Pumunta po kami doon, yung head po nila is a Jesuit who was my classmate in college and he invited me to visit this school. Napakaganda po. Barangay Mirayon is uh, at the same altitude as Baguio City. So in fact, it was quite cold when we got there. At 3 p.m., meron na pong fog. Napakaganda. Uh, when I went there, hindi lang po mga sudyante yung nandun. Actually, the whole town was there, no? Kasi... By the way, I had the distinction of being the first and only senator ever to visit Barangay Mirayon, Talakag, Bukidnon. Yung mga sudyante po, napakatalino. They're very smart. They spoke in English. Uh, they spoke in Bisaya, English and Tagalog. Perfect. They had the presentation about their culture. Perfect. Napakaganda po. Next year, uh, according to the DPWH, no, who, who were also there in this visit, uh, and let me report this to Secretary Balisakan. They will have finished the road that connects uh, Barangay Miyarayon and Talakag to Bukidnon, to, to Cagayan de Oro, and to Iligan. Siyempre po, when I got there, having traveled through that off-road, no-road um, experience, siyempre, inis na inis ako. And sabi ko nga, I'm bringing, when I went there, I brought my Metro Manila mindset, no? 
napaka-nega pagdating ko doon sabi ko ano ba to walang daan bako-bako sira-sira no pero pagdating ko po doon yung mga tao sabi nila nako senator kami po kami nan nabuhay na kami dito dito na kami for 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 so many years it's the first time in 40 50 years na meron pong daan na ginagawa dito sa aming lugar and they were actually quite happy ako po i got there i was quite um, distressed about the road but they said yan pong nakita ninyo noon po mas mahaba pa yung part na off road noon from the munisipyo all the way to barangay Mirayon wala pong daan yan ngayon po kalahati nakikita na natin and naniniwala kami that by next year and the tarpaulin said march but the dpwh said maybe june june 2016 they would have had a road which would connect Barangay Mirayon to Bukidnon, to Cagayan de Oro, and to Iligan. When you go up to Barangay Mirayon from Talakag, you see these cabbage patches all throughout. Puro mga cabbage patch because it's a vegetable growing area. They have vegetables po there. Uh, they have uh, carrots, actually, that they sell to, to Mindanao. And what they're most proud of is their, barang is their Mirayon coffee. Which, by the way, at a certain point, Starbucks bought from them. Because even the Starbucks people said that their coffee was some of the best that they've ever tasted. Gapakaganda po. Now, to the left, actually, you'll see a small area there. It's a computer lab. Uh, and that was built thanks to the donation from uh, various sources. Uh, the Jesuit priests, as we all know, magaling hong kumuha ng donasyon. Alam ho ni Mon yan, magaling kumuha ng donasyon. So they were able to build a computer lab. Unfortunately, oh, they have no internet. Um, in fact, uh, of the two telcos, only one telco was active and it's just one bar. And uh, ano po yun? Swerte-swerte daw kapag may signal. So, you know, it was really up no? because we had, this, uh, we had this visit and it reminded me why we've been pushing for these advocacies. No? Because sa totoo lang po, today we're going to talk about the memorandum circular, we're going to talk about issues with um, DTI and, and maybe some economic indicators from NEDA. We're going to be filled with so many numbers. But it's good for us to just remind ourselves na at the end of the day, ang gusto ho natin, magkaroon ng opportunities yung mga kabataan po dito sa St. Terry School magkaroon po ng pagkakataon yung mga kabataan dyan to compete with the rest of the Filipino youth and with the rest of the ASEAN youth, no? Because that's where we're headed, no? Uh, definitely, government has spent money building roads. Later on, I'm gonna ask the question and tamantama si Secretary Balisakan is here. Should government spend money to build another kind of road or another kind of highway? This time, an internet highway and not just a physical highway. These are questions I think that we need to start asking ourselves already. No? Simulan po natin tanungin. We may not come up with the answer today, but hopefully we can come up with an answer together. No? And again, no, um, just to put it on the table, this is not to put anyone on the spot. No? Because yung kakulangan po natin sa ating infrastructure or yung ating kakulangan pagdating sa internet, um, I think can truly only be resolved if we all work together. No, it can only happen if the public sector and the private sector work together hand in hand to push this agenda. Of course, with the guidance from government and from our agencies. So let me uh, end with um, that opening statement. Uh, ako po, I will have the faces of those children in uh, St. Terry's School in Barangay Mirayon uh, throughout this hearing. And hopefully, you know, at some point, sabi nga, walang forever, di ba? At some point, we can already claim and say that uh, even in Barangay Mirayon, out there, napakalayo po. Kahit po yung mga taga-talakag munisipyo, nalalayuan sila sa Barangay Mirayon. You know, even the, even the vice mayor, the congressman, the councillors even said, medyo malayo po yung pinuntuhan ninyo. Hopefully out there, no, we can find um, at the soonest possible time the opportunities that we have here in Metro Manila, also there in uh, Barangay Mirayon. All right. Uh, thank you for your indulgence for that uh, quick statement. Mga kaibigan, this is going to be the flow for today. We're going to ask our friends from uh, democracy.net and see Ms. Grace to uh, give a short presentation regarding the internet. We will ask NTC then to present their memorandum circular, um, which you have released already or which you are preparing to release. Uh, you've released it already. No? So the memorandum circular, uh, what are the salient points and what are the implications? 
we will ask DOST for an update on their initiatives. Uh, we all know that the free Wi-Fi project is lodged with um, DOST, so we'd like to get some updates there. Uh, and also on the IPP ring uh, issue that we've raised a um, uh, few hearings ago. We will ask uh, Yusek Dimagiba on his comments um, regarding the memorandum circular and what this means in terms of com consumer protection and consumer complaints. And then we will ask uh, Secretary Balisakan um, regarding uh, his comments on uh, our uh, state of the internet and, and, the, and the economy. And then later on, we would like to op have an open forum regarding possible solutions. No? Because I think uh, we've talked about the problems a lot. We've talked about um, uh, a few solutions, maybe IP peering, maybe the consumer protection issues. But I, I would like to start talking about long-term real solutions that can solve our problems in access, price, and quality. Uh, and then later on, no, we, we will be able to have some other senators ask their questions as well. And um, um, I think a number of senators have said that they want to join the discussion today. So with that, uh, we'd like to ask uh, Ms. Santos to do her presentation. May we request her to keep it uh, as brief as possible and straight to the point. Grace. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mary Grace Santos. I'm a research fellow of Learn Asia, uh, an ICT policy think tank, and also a VP for policy of Internet Society Philippine chapter. Okay, let's start with the global perspective. Um, where, where does the Philippines stand in terms of um, regional and global internet performance? Next slide. Just to give a very quick background of uh, telecom development in the Philippines, uh, just please click on the slides. As you can see there, in 1992, liberalization happened. And these are, uh, this is a very critical juncture because this was when uh, new licenses for mobile operators uh, were issued by the NTC. This was very important because with more players, there was innovation in technology as well as in the pricing scheme for mobile phone service. SMS and prepaid were introduced, and this resulted in the exponential growth in subscribers of mobile phones. In fact, by the year 2000, there were more mobile phones compared to fixed line subscription. Another critical juncture was when the interconnection rules were issued and was finally resolved in around 2001. Uh, from eight mobile operators, however, we, are now, uh, we were down to three um, around 2003, but there was still real competition. And I would like to emphasize that even if there were mergers and acquisitions, it was not as harmful because three uh, mobile operators were competing. The same mobile operators were also became the major uh, internet service providers in the Philippines. Next slide, please. But Philippine internet is a different story. Uh, we now see that there is no real competition in the market with only two major players controlling the infrastructure, therefore controlling pricing in both the wholesale and retail uh, side of internet uh, service. The smaller players have been bought out by the large ISPs from about 100 plus ISPs in 97, we're now down to less than 10, in 20, at least in 2014. And I heard that the, the number is lower in 2015. There are high barriers to entry because telecom infrastructure is a vertical and monolithic, monolithic whole, meaning if you're, a if you're a telco, you own everything from the submarine cables, the cable landing stations, the backhaul network, up to the last mile. In fact, it's a bit of a paradox that the same telcos sell wholesale to resellers, um, especially in the countryside, but they themselves compete in the same market as these resellers. There are also numerous permits and clearances uh, that are required by national government agencies, LGUs, even homeowners, which the telcos have been complaining about as a big problem in terms of expanding their infrastructure. There is also lack of interconnection among the ISPs. Um, I mentioned earlier that the one of the most crucial reform was when interconnection rules and actual interconnection happened among mobile phone operators. But um, among internet service providers, there is still a lack of interconnection today, which hampers uh, growth in so many ways. For example, due to lack of local IP peering, local traffic between two ISPs still gets sent abroad to be exchanged there 
only to be routed back to its local destination. That's what you call the tromboning. Um, so each of these data hops, every time data reaches a destination, the more destination it reaches, the higher the cost, the longer time it takes, and the quality becomes poorer. Also, there are outdated laws and regulatory framework. We have RA 7925, the Public Telecommunications Policy Act, Commonwealth Act 146, or the Public Service Act, as well as the NTC Charger, uh, Charter, which are not able to address the demands and challenges of the fast-evolving broadband age. These are simply laws that we need to amend. Next slide, please. So all these problems ha have resulted in the following. We have 44 million uh, out of 100 million uh, who are online, according to Google. But take note that these are not subscribers. These are internet users who probably share computers or go to internet coffee sh uh, cafes or telecenters. Fixed broadband, this, is a, this data is a bit outdated, but according to the Broadband Commission of the UN, in uh, 2014, there were 2.6 uh, per 100 Filipinos who are fixed broadband subscribers. And may I remind everyone that fixed broadband is, of course, the best uh, connection because it is more reliable. Mobile broadband subscri subscribers are 20.3 per 100 Filipinos. Of course, th these figures have already gone up since uh, one year ago. What is the gap? According to ICTO Executive Director Casambre in one of his speeches um, last year, he quoted a DepEd survey that says 83% of the 38,000 elementary schools nationwide has no access to the internet in their area, whether wired or wireless. I think this is uh, very apt to the uh, story that the, se the Senator Bam uh, told earlier about this school in Bukidnon, which does not have or it has internet connection, but it's very, very poor. So compared to our regional um, Asian neighbors, that is where we are at in terms of subscription uh, in broadband per 100 inhabitants. So as you can see, mobile broadband is still, the, is still king in the region, but overall we are lagging behind our Asian neighbors. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a summary of Akamai's state of the internet report. Um, as you can see here, from 2011 to 2015, nothing much has happened to the Philippines. Next slide, please. This might be a better graph uh, chart to look at. So Thailand is leading among Southeast Asia. Uh, the Philippines is third to the lowest in terms of average connection speed. The colors you see there are from 2011 blue to 2015. Next slide, please. In terms of connection speed, the latest Akamai State of the Internet report for the first quarter of 2015 puts the Philippines still as the second slowest in the Asia Pacific. Um, again, this, this, this chart does not include other low-income countries, so I'm just comparing the Philippines with, you know, countries that it is supposedly at par with in terms of econ uh, economic standing. So in terms of uh, average peak connection speed, 20.3 Mbps is what was registered for the Philippines. As you can see, Singapore is leading with 98.5, um, Hong Kong with 92.6, and South Korea at 90, uh, 79 Mbps. Next slide, please. Internet connection is also very expensive in the Philippines. In wholesale pricing, if you want to buy business grade bandwidth for one G, uh, Gbps, according to this table, in Hong Kong, you can buy the same bandwidth for $5. In Australia, it's $6. But when, once you reach Manila, it ranges from $25 to $45 per Mbps. And in Cebu, it's even higher at $70. For retail, at one point, according to UCLA's net index, which unfortunately was already discontinued last week, we became the second most expensive out of 62 countries that, that it uh, studied. So compared to Indonesia, which has 17,000 islands, that's 10,000 more islands than the Philippines, we actually charge higher by $4. Next slide, please. So, sir, that's the Philippines compared to its regional and um, neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Now, I just have a follow-up question. Can we go to the uh, slide 
that showed the speed across years? Maybe the, that one. So I, I have two questions. The one is that everyone seems to be increasing, no? Yes. But our rate of increase is very not as high as the, the others. No? That is correct. Okay. And then for Thailand, they had such a big leap uh, in 2013 and That's 2014. Correct. Would you know what happened in Thailand in 2013 and 2014? Hence the dramatic um, increase in their internet quality. So one, one main difference uh, between the Philippines and its other ASEAN neighbors is that the government invests in infrastructure. So I can only surmise that there was huge investment in terms of expanding infrastructure. Unfortunately for the Philippines, our government does not have enough investment. Although it, ICTO and the OST ASTI have been investing in some fiber optic networks, also building internet exchanges, but in terms of having a national, an, a national backbone that is carrier neutral, we don't have that. We are reliant on uh, private operators. Yeah. Well, so are you saying, Grace, no, upon your, you know, you've done research on this for a number of years already, um, and we ask you because you're not connected to anyone in the private sector, no, so we, we would like to think that you're quite objective um, with your statements, no? Um, that you th is that the main reason why we were left behind? that uh, a lack of government support for, um, for the internet infrastructure? Actually, more importantly, we don't have competition. So it's those two? It's those two. We, okay. we, I, would, I wouldn't say that we need government um, investment as big as what the other countries are, are investing. Mm -hmm. I would say we need government to step up in terms of providing a carrier neutral national backbone and also encouraging more competition in the market. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Um, all right. Uh, we'll ask uh, Liel. Is it Liel who will, uh, Commissioner Liel, who will be presenting? It's Egai, Director Egai. If you can kindly um, give us the salient points of your memorandum circular and um, kung ano po yung mga implikasyon nito, especially sa, sa mga namimili ng internet po. Sorry, oh, my pahabol daw si Grace. Yes, Grace. So just very briefly, I want to show the uh, Learn Asia study on quality of service. It's actually a second part of the presentation. Oh, so you're not finished yet? Yes, sir. Oh, Sorry sige. Okay. That. Sorry po, Director Egay. Uh, okay. Can you click uh, Learn Asia? The, the Learn Asia. No, no, that's democracy.net. Sorry. Very briefly, sir. Um, Learn Asia is a regional ICT policy uh, think tank, and we've been conducting quality of service uh, testing since 2010. And this is just a, a brief summary of the trend that we saw in terms of uh, how ISPs performed, ha have performed over the past four years. But what I have here is actually for three years, 2011, 2013, and 2014. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry about that. Um, this, this, this just shows the methodology that we've used. Um, we are very happy that the NTC has adopted some of our recommendations. Basically, we measured five to six metrics, upload and download speed, latency, jitter, packet loss, and service availability. Maybe we should skip that. Uh, okay. Why do we recommend those six metrics? It's because it's not all about download speed. The actual use of uh, an internet uh, subscriber, an internet user, would actually rely on so many other factors. And that includes latency, for example, which uh, is highly relevant for services such as VOIP. And we all know that, uh, you know, the Philippines has a lot of OFW families that rely on VOIP. Latency is also important for online games, as well as uh, jitter is also important for VOIP, as well as packet loss. So this is why we do not want to stop at just looking for uh, download and upload speeds. Okay, next slide, please. So ideally, what, what do we want to see when we test? Download speed, we want the actual speed to reach the advertised speed at least 80% of the time. And we want higher speed performance year on year. In terms of value for money, we want good value wherein you, you get more KBPS per, for every peso. And you want better value for money year on year. In terms of latency, you want lower latency. In fact, 
uh, the Singap Singapore's IDA recommends uh, latency of less than 300 milliseconds uh, if you're trying to reach an international server. So that's what we want, lower latency. And we want that to improve every year. Next slide, please. So based on our study, this is what we found. We tested the basic data plans of the three major ISPs in the Philippines. And as you can see here, from 2011, that's the blue line, we actually saw deteriorating actual versus advertised speed from 2011 to 2014. So that's not the ideal scenario. You want the, the lines to go up as you go you know, from 2011 to 2014. Next slide, please. In terms of value for money, we also saw that we were actually paying more for less every year. Um, for ISP A and ISP B, you will see that in 2014, that's where the lowest, the, the lowest value for money that was offered. Next slide, please. So compared to our Asian neighbors, these are actually all the ISPs we tested in South Asia and Southeast Asia. You will see there at the bottom, those are the Philippine ISPs. We actually offered the lowest value for money when we tested all these other ISPs uh, during the first quarter of 2014. So that's something. That's a position that we don't want to be in, because that means Filipino internet subscribers pay more for less. Next slide. Uh, in terms of latency, there were there was some improvement in 2013, but only to deteriorate again in 2014. So that's something that we want to see uh, improve over the next uh, couple of years. Next slide. So as a summary and conclusion. Download speed, actual speed never reached the advertised speed, not even once, in all the tests we've conducted since 2011. The highest average uh, actual speed that was attained by an ISP was only 26.65% of the advertised speed. That means it's 80%, it was always 80% lower than the advertised speed. And speed performance actually declined for all ISPs tested year on year. So we asked, is this a sign of network congestion in the last mile? We want to know where the problem area is. Um, for value for money, we also, we, the Philippines um, ISPs offer the lowest value for money among all the ISPs tested in South, in South Asia and Southeast Asia. Next, next slide. Uh, for latency, we saw, again, we saw some improvement in 2013, but it still deteriorated a year after. So we want the ISPs, uh, we want to encourage the ISPs to improve peering arrangements and make efficient use of international bandwidth so that latency will improve. And as a recommendation for the NTC, uh, we, we laud the NTC for issuing the MC on broadband service, but um, we also want to remind and encourage the NTC to measure, publish the results, and produce reports on a regular basis because even if we have the law in place, the rule in place, uh, if we're complacent about publishing the results, then it won't be of any help to the consumers. Um, and again, we also would like to encourage the NTC to provide, as promised, a software or web-based measurement tool for consumers to use, and eventually set minimum standards based on internationally accepted standards on all the five metrics that will be measured. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Grace. Um, so that's, those are, that's all of your presentations right now, right? Marami salamat. So, uh, Director Egay, please. Thank you very much, uh, sir, Your Honor. Um, we are uh, going to present the um, uh, salient points of the uh, recently issued uh, memorandum circular uh, number 0708-2015 on uh, fixed broadband internet access service. Um, we had uh, four, conducted four uh, public hearings and uh, seven uh, technical working group meetings uh, trying to uh, come up with uh, consensus on all of the issues um, with numerous um, uh, pl um, members of the uh, group uh, participating in discussions. It really uh, took quite a while before we were able to uh, get consensus on most of the issues. Uh, the um, issues that uh, were left without consensus, the Commission had uh, decided on those issues. Um, basically, we have um, 
we have uh, agreed to uh, come up with an MC. Uh, we call it uh, measure and publish. Uh, but setting the minimum standards, uh, we agreed to have a separate uh, uh, MC to be issued uh, later on uh, the minimum standards, or we call it threshold. So uh, the, the purpose, the objective of the MC uh, is, of, of course, uh, uh, next slide, please. Uh, th there you see uh, those, uh, the um, position papers submitted. There, there were numerous uh, position papers. Uh, the MC was published, uh, Philippine Star, uh, last uh, Saturday, 15 uh, August, and will be effective uh, 30 August. The uh, objectives of the MC is uh, first is to have an independent measurement. Uh, we are uh, provided with reports from Akamai Ukla, but these are uh, <coughs> we consider this as non in not independent measurements. We will do the uh, measurement. Uh, NTC will do the measurement, and uh, we will measure downstream and upstream uh, data rate average, uh, latency, jitter, and packet loss. Uh, this MC is. Uh <coughs> Of um, course, uh, the, the purpose is to empower the consumers to have uh, informed uh, choice of service providers. <coughs> the uh, the uh, MC uh, uh, s provides that NTC shall uh, perform the measurement, and the measurement tool uh, will be downloadable so that the consumers can uh, perform measurements themselves. But uh, the uh, measurement done by uh, the commission will be the, the, the official one. Uh, measurements will be conducted twice a week, at least twice a week. And the parameters to be measured, uh, as uh, we have stated earlier, average downstream, upstream uh, data rate, latency, jitter, and uh, packet loss. The uh, result uh, uh, shall be published per area. Uh, the area can be administrative region or province or town or city, not later than five days uh, after the end of each month. And the ISP shall be informed before the publication of the results so that they will be given the opportunity to explain uh, the result of the, uh, of the uh, test uh, or measurements uh, done. Um, the, uh, uh, next, next please. The uh, ISPs, in their offer to consumers shall uh, properly inform uh, their, 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 their subscribers of uh, the service being offered and the uh, information should be uh, updated. Uh, they should specify the average downstream upstream data rates uh, per area and they should automatically uh, inform the subscribers of the, uh, if the uh, data volume consumed reaches 80%, 85, 90, and 95%. And when uh, the data volume uh, consumed reach 100%, uh, the consumers are reminded that if they uh, continue with the service, they will be charged the normal rates, uh, so that there will be no uh, uh, throttling or, or, or uh, cutting off of the service. Uh, due to competition and uh, the publication of the results of the measurement, it is expected that there will be improvement and increase in the broadband, but the increase will not be substantial. Uh, first is uh, there is limited uh, private sector investments in the, in, in the telecoms uh, industry. It is estimated that it's around 60 billion per annum, it's very low. And uh, subsidy through areas where traffic is low is uh, placing the uh, the uh, prices of uh, broadband services relatively high because of the subsidy uh, in areas where traffic is very low. So this is um, uh, um, the same as uh, what Grace has uh, earlier said that uh, uh, government should invest so that we can uh, we can uh, reduce the subsidy by the private sector to the areas uh, where traffic is low. So that we can, uh, if the uh, subsidy provided by the private sector to the areas of traffic is low, is reduced, prices will be reduced, and uh, 
uh, speed will be increased. Uh, there is a correlation, direct correlation between uh, prices and speed. If you decrease prices, uh, speed will be uh, will be higher, etc. So, uh, well, uh, moving forward, uh, we suggest that uh, an interagency body with Congress and uh, uh, with Congress to study government intervention in putting up the infrastructure. Uh, this uh, we believe is uh, needed to uh, reduce prices and increase uh, uh, internet speed and also penetration. Uh, because uh, based on uh, uh, studies, 10% uh, increase in penetration will increase the GDP by 1.23%. And uh, increase doubling the speed will uh, increase the GDP by 0.3%. Uh, so there is direct correlation between uh, increases in both penetration and speed to uh, the growth in the GDP. Uh, we are also uh, suggesting uh, the increase in the uh, penalty for violations of uh, the rules and laws. Uh, reclassi reclassifying internet as a basic service because pursuant to RA 7925, uh, internet access is classified as a value-added service. We also propose the creation of a universal access fund. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, Philippines is the only country without a universal access fund. Uh, there is a universal fund for uh, power and for water, but there's none for telecoms. And we also uh, would uh, recommend the assessment of the nationality requirement uh, because foreign ownership is limited to 40% for telcos. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Director. I have some questions. No? Um, your last slide is very interesting, and um, do I take it this is the official stand of the NTC regarding how to move forward with our internet uh, issues? So this is the first time you're sharing this, no? From in all of our hearings, no? this is the first time. Kundi ako nagakamale. These sp very specific ideas, no? Okay. Can we go back? Let before we go to this, no? And um, I, I, I of course would like to ask uh, Secretary Balisakan's comments on ito mga moving forward, but. Before that, if we can go back to the, um, the MC itself. Uh, one of the main uh, differences so, is that now we are asking the telcos to post the average speed, not the up to speed. Is that right? Is that the, one of the main parts of the, the MC? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, no. It is the average speed. Can you uh, explain speed. to the public the difference between the up to speed and the average speed, just so that we have it on the record? Uh, the average speed is we uh, take uh, several tests uh, for the entire uh, uh, duration of the test and uh, take the average of, uh, of, of all the uh, results of the test conducted. The up to is, uh, is experience when uh, when uh, access to the internet is very low, meaning to say few persons or few individuals are accessing the network, so the, they can have as, as high as, uh, as possible as that can be delivered by the network uh, to these consumers. So, so we're saying, uh, yung most likely na mararanasan ng subscriber na bilis, which is the average speed, is, is that what you're saying? Yun dapat yung nakalagay sa mga advertisements? Uh, yes, Your Honor, yes. All right. And this is, uh, is this the first time that the NTC is, um, this is a rule, basically, no? It's creating a rule regarding what our telcos and our ISPs can publish. Uh, yes, Your Honor, because zero M Memorandum Order 0707-2011 uh, requires the telcos to uh, publish the minimum speed that could be experienced by the subscribers 80% of the time. That was the 0707. All right. So in, in an advertisement, and later on I'm going to ask the um, comment from our telco partners here, uh, yung current rule ho is that they can advertise, they usually advertise the up to speed, but there is a minimum speed that is advertised, no? To be fair. Uh, yes, Your yes. Honor. Uh, but sometimes in that fine print, the minimum speed is uh, 256 kbps. 
right? No, usually yun yung nakalagay, tama? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And for mobile, it's even less. Uh, there are carriers that say the minimum speed is is, is uh, 48 or even <laughs> lower. Or even lower. Yeah. That's why, in one of our hearings, we said posting the minimum speed if it's that low. Um, won't be useful to the consumer no? because the consumer would want to be able to to experience a speed close to the advertised speed. No? If I'm not mistaken, yun po yung genesis nitong ruling na ito. No? So now, we will expect the average speed to be posted side by side with the up to speed and the minimum speed. Uh, yes, Your Honor, because MC 0707-2011 remains effective. Okay. So they, they, they have to publish also the uh, minimum speed. And the average speed, is your average speed within 24 hours? Or within one month? Or within, ano ho yung time period ng average speed? Uh, within one month, Your Honor, because we do the measurements for the entire month and then release the average speed. Alright. So, within a given month, your average speed, so, in all of the time periods within a month, uh, the, the telcos will be posting that average speed. And more or less, Actually, not more or less. Eighty percent of the time, a subscriber must be within that range of average speed. Is that right? Yun ho ba yung board ng ruling natin? Uh, MC, this this uh, latest MC, your honor, does not provide that one. But if we can relate that one to zero uh, seven zero seven uh, twenty eleven, but we will consider the average speed as the uh, the minimum or the the published speed, so they should be able to experience that one eighty percent of the time. All right. Uh, now, just to be clear, no, that's why you mentioned here reclassify internet as a basic service because technically, you cannot regulate the internet because it's a value-added service. Tama po, di ba? That's been our discussion point a number of hearings ago. Tama po, director. Uh, yes, your honor, because the 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 argument is that uh, we cannot. Um, uh, set uh, standards mm -hmm. because it is uh, this the service is deregulated. That's right. So hindi mo pwedeng sabihin o kailangan ganito yung presyo. Hindi ho pwede yon, di ba? Yes, and even the minimum speed. Uh, oh, hindi mo rin pwedeng sabihin yes, yes. minimum speed 5. Hindi rin ho pwede yon yes, because yes, it's yes, not yes. a basic service. Yes, yes, yes. But what we can do uh, because NTC still has regulatory powers, no? Uh, or is still the regulator in this case. They can create rules and regulations to basically have the advertisements to be closer to the experience of the uh, of the consumers. Tama po? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And that's what you've done with the memorandum circular this Saturday. Yes, Your Honor. Tama po, no? Okay. Let me ask si Attorney Dibagi ba. Kung ito na po yung average speed, does that correlate to the DTI's work? Alam ko po si Yusik Dibagi ba is um, head of the consumer division of uh, of DTI and. Uh, I know in previous hearings you've had comments already you know, regarding the up to speed. Pero ngayon po na mandated na na yung average speed kailangan nakalagay sa mga advertisements. If I don't experience the average speed, uh, what is my course of action? Uh, Yusek de Magiba. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We signed the memorandum agreement with our friends in NTC in May 2015. Now, I guess I have to ask the question now because uh, this is the first time uh, we came to be informed about that MC. Uh, in our MOA last May, we uh, so-called shared responsibilities of consumer complaints. And uh, for poor service, uh, NTC will handle the complaints. For misleading advertisements, it's DTI. I'd like to ask the questions from NTC now. With the issuance of the MC, uh, are they also handling the policing of the misleading advertisement of this MC? Um, Before you ask, uh, we have no problem if NTC propose an amendment of our MOA. So they can also correlate and handle poor service with misleading advertisement. Bakit hihiwalayin pa? Ay yung standards nasa kanila. Uh, Your Honor, um, we cannot classify that as a poor service because we do not have minimum standards. No? We cannot say that's a poor service. But we can say that there is something wrong in the advertisements. Uh, if they advertise this speed and the measurements say it's lower than that advertised speed, so th there's, there's something wrong in the, the, in the advertisements, Your Honor. Okay. So 
the one big difference also from last year was that last year you did not have the capacity to measure. Tama, di ba? That's why paikot-ikot yung diskusyon na natin because even the measurements themselves was being challenged. No? Because uh, you had mentioned before that this um, speed test or UCLA or Akamai were not official uh, official measurements. No? Ngayon, we're saying that the NTC will have official measurements. They will be open to the public. Now, in the case where the average speed and your measurements match, wala tayong problema, di ba? In the case where the published average speed and your measurement, kung mas mataas yung published average speed, we're actually quite happy, right? Di ba? Masaya tayo doon. Now, what if the published average speed is less? Then, no, is higher. Okay, I'm confused, though. Let me repeat that. Ulitin ko po yun. Kung magka-match sila, or within, I guess, you'll probably state a given range, no? since this won't be uh, probably exact. No? So, say, plus or minus X percent, okay tayo kung magka-match sila. Kung yung published speed, uh, mas mababa dun sa test ninyo, okay yon Because consumers are actually getting more for their money, no? technically speaking. But if the reverse happens, which is that the published average speed is lower, no, is higher than your test, meaning, hindi nakukuha ng consumer yung nakalagay sa advertisement na average speed, what will be the course of action of NTC? Will it be a reprimand? Will it be a memorandum? Will it be a fine? And secondly, does the consumer have any uh, part to play in that complaint? Um, Liel or Director Egay? Sure. Uh, uh, good, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, that would fall under ano po, uh, consumer complaints for uh, uh, not false advertising. Po. So we would uh, maybe ask for uh, coordination with the DTI on this matter para po sa penalties that they can, that they can impose. Okay, so it seems, uh, Yusek, the ball so is in the, your court, no? Yeah, Mr. Chen. So the answer is, uh, it's still DTI. So I are you happy with that, that it's still with DTI, or are you unhappy with that? No, I, we just want to be trained by okay. NTC how to handle the complaints. Okay, no. <laughs> oh, obviously, mag-uusap pa naman pa kayo pagkatapos, no? But yung lalabas ho dyan is that um, they will come up with their uh, published reports, and that will be matched to the to the advertisements, no? If I'm not mistaken, right? Okay. Yeah, but uh, maybe, uh, well, part of the moving forward, you should also propose increasing the fines not only of your Republic Act, but also of the Consumer Act. As well, we, we're working on the Consumer Act separately, no? Separate you yeah. So, but I just want to be clear about this, no? Is, does that become a reason for consumers to file a complaint? If your published report does not match the advertisement that was uh, shown to them, can it be a reason for a complaint? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Opo. That would be ano po, uh, false advertising. And, and also, sir, actually, um, as we have mentioned, uh, what we did in, um, in voice and uh, in voice quality of service before, the publication is really the... the like the penalty that, that the um, providers will, will really feel because most of the providers are traded in the stock market. So mm -hmm. any uh, bad publication against their, their services would have an effect on the share price yes. of their uh, Well, but that's a, no, that's a market solution. No? We're talking about government intervention. No? But to be fair naman to the telcos also, um, Egay and uh, Liel, may mga puwang naman yan, di ba? Hindi naman yan... If today I didn't get it, then I can complain right away. No, may, may mga puwang naman yan na X percent service levels, etc., etc. Did, did you have that in your MC or ni pa nakalagay yon sa MC? Because I can understand. No, nag nagkaroon yung, yung post na yun, hulog for that day. No, and you know, assuming the interruption is not the whole month or just a day, no, they should be able to have that opportunity to fix it, naman, di ba? I mean, to be fair, but if your interruption is already uh, across uh, a given period of time and you're really uh, having poor, you know, lower than uh, advertised uh, speeds, then you should be able to complain properly. So, let, let me ask the question again. 
people can wait for your published rate and they can use that as a complaint. Is that right? Uh, in the MC, Your Honor, uh, before the publication, uh, the ISPs or the telcos will have the chance to look at the results and explain. If the explanation is not acceptable, then the consumers can, uh, can of course, uh, file a complaint. Yes. And they will file a complaint with DTI? Yes, yes. Sir. Yes. And then kayo po, as the regulator, you can also find them separately in terms of uh, your powers as a regulator. That's right. But this is only about 200 pesos per... This is just 200 pesos. Yes, sir. Uh, based on the <coughs> on uh, Public Service Act of 1930. Okay, because we have not updated the Public Service Act of 1930. 36. Okay. 1936. Actually, sir, uh, just uh, an additional. Um, sir, we um, we had an, um, a chance to, to coordinate with Congress because they... They were putting up a law. Uh, they were uh, um, uh, creating a law, uh, and and they checked how much is the 200 pesos in that 1930s compared to to how much it is right now. And uh, we asked for help from uh, the NEDA, and based on their computations, it's it's around the 1.4 million. The 200 pesos before is around 1.4 million in present time. All right. Thank you for that. Let me ask a comment. Maybe see si Mr. Casino can can start. Um, you've seen the memorandum circular. Will it be difficult for you to to uh, follow the memorandum circular, considering the advertis uh, advertisements you already have? Um, any comments on this? Just so that we have it on the record. No? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Honor. Uh, actually, we uh, support the uh, NTC on this. It's just that uh, by uh, putting up any... Uh, Average on the speed of uh, our service, uh, we may be having a hard time. Uh, not on our part, but rather perhaps on the NTC in implementing this. You know. But why is that? Well, uh, well Your Honor, um, lagi po kasi ano eh, uh, parang nahuhuli ang uh, NTC sa mga bagay na ito. Okay. But I think this is a, a, a good move actually. Okay. So you're you're just saying na baka hindi ito ma, ma measure ng NTC yes, regularly no in fact yes. I think si Grace put in her recommendation that they should do it regularly. So ano po ba yung frequency ng balak ko po ninyo uh, Commissioner Liel or, or Director Egay? Where every what is the period of uh, publication of your ano of your uh, measurements? Uh, the MC, Your Honor, has, uh, provides that uh, the results will be published every month, uh, uh, not later than five days uh, from the end of, of each month. And the um, measurements shall be done at least twice a week, uh, Your Honor, so that uh, we can have uh, more uh, data sets, uh, so that we can have a uh, more accurate uh, result, uh, Your Honor. Then, sir, so... Obviously, this is geographically based, yes. no? So I'm assuming that you have uh, NTC offices and personnel all over the Philippines who will be doing this testing? Uh, yes, Your Honor, but we will start uh, here in Metro Manila. Okay. So when can we expect your first set of numbers? Uh, Your Honor, uh, we will have the pilot test uh, by the second week of September. Uh, Everybody is invited, Your Honor, in okay. the telcos and the consumers. So, that, uh, so tuloy itong ligaya ng ating mga pagsasama. So second week yes. of September, yes. you're going to test. Uh -huh. Isn't this supposed to be secret? Akala ko secret uh, po ito na in testing. Po, this pilot test, so that if there, are, uh, there, there is a need to adjust uh, for adjustment, then we can adjust before uh -huh. the actual test. Uh, so this is not the official, these Hindi. are not official results? Hindi pa po. Uh, October po yung, uh, yung start of the, uh, of the uh, test. Na yun na ho yung official test. Okay, uh, October and every month after that, no? Yes, In multiple Honor. areas. How many areas so do you imagine? You were starting with Metro Manila, but yung na-imagine ho natin na testing is done every province or every region, every city? Ano po yung uh, balak po natin? Uh, personal to the MC, it would be per area. So the release is per area. Yeah, well, uh, area ho is a variable um, term. Eh. Yes. Uh, kasi oh, meron uh, uh, in Metro Manila, in the entire Metro Manila perhaps, uh, pwede yun, per area. And uh, in the provinces, kasi there are uh, 
of service providers that are only in one area in one town so dun lang ho yun sa town okay and you will be you, you will have enough personnel to do this or will you be deputizing schools or, 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 or other government agencies to do this for you we have uh, 15 uh, regional uh, okay. centers you know. so the regional centers will be doing this no yes yes sir. Opo. and we can expect results every month we create that data set and then uh, Simi Sanchez, no, I, I remember in a couple of hearings ago, we said per province we can have actually the, um, the, the, the speeds per province, no? and that becomes part of the, probably the competitiveness of the province. So we, we will have that data sets also, uh, Director Egay. Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, okay. Uh, so Mr. Casino, yun yung, yun yung pangako po nila no, to have the tests more regularly. Uh, yes, Your Honor, but uh, do we get it to mean that uh, we will not be present during those uh, times that uh, yes, director, speech please are answer. Being, are being tested? Uh, during the pilot test, yes, but uh, during actual test, hindi na po sila kasama. Uh, I, I saw in the MC that there will be a parang may, may test na in the offices, then merong isa na undisclosed location. No? Is that right? Parang I remember reading that in the memorandum circular. Uh, yes, Your Honor. We have the known locations. Known locations will be discussed uh, mm -hmm. with the telcos and consumer consumers. So, saan po ito mga to? Perhaps we may be coordinating with DLG and and DepEd para ang test do sa eskulahan mismo. Uh -huh. Yung uh -huh. eskulahan. So, uh, there are uh, several possibilities of um, of looking for the known locations. And the uh, director. The NTC is built for this, no? You you have the personnel, you have the equipment for this already. Because we don't want to raise expectations po that these tests will happen regularly. Tapos within six months, sasabihin ninyo, ay kulang kami ng tao, kulang kami ng computer, kulang kami ng ganto. We're built for this. The uh, initial uh, run po kasi is uh, only for uh, for NCR. Uh, the uh, additional equipment po kasi will be coming next year with the approval of the of the uh, of our request for additional three uh, uh, equipment mm -hmm. uh, test equipment uh, that would be uh, bidded out next year if approved by Congress po uh -huh. so uh, it will be uh, perhaps available by the middle of uh, next year so that the, the those in the provinces can conduct uh, the okay. test already. well we want to see this happen uh, director Egay and um, I'm sure alam nyo na, but uh, I was recently assigned as the Vice Chairman for Finance handling your budget. So, tama-tama, pag-usapan natin how to have these tests, no? Uh, and I'm happy that you you raised some of these moving forward items, no? Because I would also like to see this move forward during our budget deliberations, no? Um, will it be Roy or, or Mon that we can ask for comments regarding the MC? Uh, yes, Mon, uh, any comments on the memorandum circular? Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, we're just um, we're appreciative of the fact that this uh, memorandum circular was uh, formulated based on the inputs of all the parties, stakeholders concerned. So we're going to work with the NTC in order to make this uh, uh, memorandum circular be properly implemented. Thank you, thank you Mon. Uh, I guess the biggest effect for for our big telcos is really the advertisements no w will it be terribly difficult to to change the the way that our advertisements are done and and made because i think it's a new item that people will be expecting in the ads no uh, anyone want to answer uh, our marketing people are supposed to be very creative we'll be able to work with this uh <laughs> with this new uh, regime Thank you, Mon. Uh, Manny? The uh, telecommunications industry is a very, very dynamic industry. Such that uh, I think uh, almost every month we change our uh, promo packages. Okay. So uh, with that, we will, I think, uh, having a hard time, but not that hard. I uh, guess, as uh, Mon said, that uh, our marketing guys are very, very creative nowadays. Yes. Uh, Director Ega, you know, I remember also you, you mentioned that um, uh, you put in new rules in terms of the volume uh, that the consumer uh, uses, no? Na kung malapit na sa limit, kailangan meron ng abiso. Tama? Does this presuppose that the days of unlimited are are done? Yun ho bang ibig sabihin nun? Na kailangan magpalit na rin ng, 
uh, advertising yung ating telcos? Um, because they are responding to the, uh, the OJ advisory that if they are not really offering unlimited service with term unlimited, they should move to to volume-based pricing, and they, they are moving in that direction, Iran, or volume-based pricing. So we, we've already seen that shift. No? I, I'm sorry, no, I haven't uh, been checking the ads of uh, the telcos, but has that happened already? Uh, for Globe, Your Honor, we have already uh, discontinued with the uh, unreserved uh, packages. We are now in GoSurf. It's a uh, volume-based uh, uh, agreement, actually, with the consumer. And the, the uh, requirement of NTC where you need to tell the uh, consumer that they're at certain limits already or certain benchmarks of their usage, can that be done? That, I guess that's system yes, generated, uh, I no? think uh, we're already doing that. You're already doing that, yes. no? And uh, for, for smart PLDT, that's already being done? Mr. Chairman, we're likewise moving in the same direction and uh, also adopting the same technical measures. Uh, let me ask uh, Director Liel, no? we, we really appreciate this, this memorandum circular, but we also recognize that uh, the mobile broadband side is not included in this memo circular. This is for cable and fixed line, no? uh, DSL, fiber, and um, uh, cable. No? Uh, when, is the, when are the uh, regulations for mobile broadband coming out? Sir, uh, we, we're, we already have a draft and we can submit it to the, to the committee. Right now, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to publish it. Um, uh, Circa said there's no uh, work on Friday, so Monday next week, and then 15 days from from that date, that would be the first hearing date for mobile. Actually, sir, it's not so difficult as uh, as uh, the first one because there were so many agreements during the first uh, uh, MC. But for this, uh, maybe uh, adjustments on the measurement side. That's right. Now, yes. If I remember, the concern was, uh, pag nakalain kasi, you can really test right there and then. It should be consistent. But with mobile, and this is raised by our telcos last time, eh, baka nasa basement 5 ka, or baka nasa ilalim ka ng something-something, di ba? So, uh, but we also know that 90% of subscribers are on mobile. Only 10% is on the fixed line. So, I hope you take that into consideration, come up with something fair, both for our private sector, but also for our consumers. No? So, when can we expect this um, memorandum circular to come out, uh, Commissioner? Sir, uh, based on our experience here, maybe, maybe uh, if we start, uh, that would be mid-September, maybe give us a, a month or two months. But it also depends on the, <laughs> on the discussions, because we expected to finish the fixed line uh, MC very fast, but during the, the, the TWG hearing, so many issues came up. So uh, what we did was we wanted to have consensus on, on majority of the issues before we decide on the, on the ones that, are not, that there, are, there are no consensus on. So maybe, sir, our, our minimum would be uh, two months. All right. So we'll expect that in two months, yes, no? Sir. But um, in between, we'll have the pilot testing of the measurements next month. So talagang forever talaga tong ating uh, discussions. No? And I think in October, we'll have your budget hearing, which of course, I guess, people will be interested also to see. No? All right. Uh, maybe we can uh, move from the MC and uh, ask uh, uh, Mr. Lara to give some updates on the issues of IPP ring as well as the um, initiatives of the OST ICTO uh, with regard to uh, helping um, promote access to internet in the country. Yes. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I have a short presentation, I think around five slides only. So um, I'm from AST of the OST, and uh, we are operating a lot of projects. One of the projects that we're doing is about uh, an internet exchange called the Philippine Open IX. Next slide. So membership through the years, uh, 2007 when it all started until 2015, we already have 33 directly peered AS numbers. So we use the word direct because some of the AS or some of the networks connected, they have also networks at their back that they are contributing to the internet exchange. So more or less, it's more than that. But directly connected, 33. Next slide. Uh, upcoming members, this is a 2014 slide. The ones that I crossed out already got their budgets to um, get a lease line to connect to the IX. 
So LaSalle, DSW, DSSS, uh, some of the networks. So the others, uh, I guess, are currently uh, lobbying for funds with their management to get connected to the internet exchange. So we're expecting more for 2015 and 2016. As of June of this year, we are already reaching around 8 gig of traffic. I checked yesterday. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a screenshot. It's already going at 9 gig. So um, it's growing aggressively uh, this year. Next slide. Recent upgrades. Um, before, we were only talking about 10 meg, 50 meg. Then we were happy with 100 meg upgrade of some of the networks. As of now, uh, a lot of them are going to the 1 gig uh, link. And several are already asking if they can plug in via 10 gig uh, port. So we're very happy with those developments. Next slide. So also some of the upgrades. Next slide. Moving forward, um, we hope to have more networks in Metro Manila connected. Uh, we're trying to get more uh, CDNs or content uh, to peer with the IX. Uh, in partnership with the DOST Wi-Fi project, there are, I think, 14 um, pops or nodes all over the Philippines that uh, the free Wi-Fi project will centralize on. So to ride on those 14 nodes of ICTO, we are thinking of setting up also internet exchanges there. Um, we are looking for IP blocks in order to expand the internet exchange. Uh, of course, lobbying for donations. As of now, the IX is just relying on uh, donated um, hardware from both local and abroad. And of course, more network training through uh, partnership with other um, entities. Next slide. We're expanding to Cebu. This is actually delayed. We should have accomplished this last um, July. So we're trying to finish this before uh, September. Next slide. OK, thank you. Uh, for the free Wi-Fi update, sir, uh, unfortunately, Mr. Pagal is not here. He's from the ICTO office. so. He was supposed to give an update on that. Uh, wala kang share dyan, uh, Bayani. Uh, all I know, sir, is there has the tender is ongoing and uh, some of the links from Manila, the 10 gig links, the backbone, going to some of the, the urban areas uh, have already been awarded and they are now working on getting the links from those uh, regional urban areas going to the 4th and 5th class municipalities. Sir. I see. So, Okay, so to a certain extent, this is government's um, initiative to try to connect these uh, far-flung areas. Tama, di ba? Yes, sir. Yes, no. Um, what percentage of fourth, fifth, and uh, sixth class municipalities will we be able to reach with the, or you wouldn't be able to tell us that uh, right now? Sorry, sir, I, I am not. Uh, anyway. Okay, I'm maybe not. for our next hearing, now we can focus on that because access is... Um, Key, key indicator of our hearings, no? not just speed and, and quality, but also access. So we would really like to know um, the 1.4 billion that was uh, in, in, in the DOST budget with regard to trying to reach these areas, if it's really enough or not. I don't think it's enough, no? honestly. Parang maliit pa yon, no? So um, this is the budget season, and this is the time to actually um, uh, you know, push for these initiatives which are important. So, with regard to free Wi-Fi, we're hoping that you can give us better data and you can tell your uh, colleagues at the OST uh, which areas will be um, will be um, covered by the free Wi-Fi project. What speed do we imagine uh, we can provide the free Wi-Fi as well as um, well, it's free, so dapat walang cost, no. Uh, and of course, uh, what areas that we cover, which we presuppose are not currently covered by the private sector. I think that's the one of the main indicators. Yes, diba? sir. Uh, as far as I know, uh, what Yusek Kasambre said is uh, they will focus on the areas that is that has little or no service, mm -hmm. not really much on the areas that already have uh, telco presence. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and later on, no, um, as we go through the year and go through the budget process, and maybe with the help of, of uh, Secretary Balisakan, we can take a look at um, uh, really having that huge push no, for, for free Wi-Fi. Or, alam mo, free Wi-Fi kasi is a misnomer. No? I think yung mahalaga is the infrastructure is laid out, di ba? Because once the infrastructure is there, it can be free, it can be a paid service, but the point is, umaabot yung, 
yung infrastructure doon. No? I mean, just to contextualize, DPWH has a budget of about 300 billion. No? And this is for your roads, for your highways, for your bridges, which is, of course, important that it's in the budget. But if we were also to focus on internet infrastructure, in the budget, it's about 1.4 billion. So, napakalayo rin nung, um, nung budget items na yan, and that 1.4 was last year. No? I don't even know if there's a separate budget item for it this year. No? So, I think that's something that we can explore further. And um, again, no, if we hit places like Barangay Miarayon, uh, their coffee, their carrots, their cabbage, their products, can get further out, the, the, the farmers there can get higher value for their products. At the same time, the children there can see an increase in the content that they're able to receive for their education. No? So we can talk about that separately. But before we let you go, uh, Bayani, can you give us an update with regard to the uh, MOA, the MOAs needed for the Philippine Open Exchange and for our IP peering? No? If I'm not mistaken, um, uh, there's already a draft MOA between our friends from Smart PLDT and uh, the OST. No, there's a draft MOA already that uh, is ready to be signed, if I'm not mistaken. Can you give us an update on that? Yeah, uh, we had a meeting with the PLDT people yesterday, and they are uh, going to finalize. There's two parts in the negotiation. Eh? One is the infrastructure, that's the fiber uh, connectivity from PLDT going to ASTI. Then the second part would be the actual peering. Okay. So the fiber part, um, they hope to have it finished by Wednesday next week, if I'm not mistaken, August 26. Then after that, uh, I think August 27 or 28, the peering can already happen. That's just virtual. Eh? That's just router configuration. So we hope to have some use by the end of next week uh, in terms of the actual uh, peering of PLDT. You want to comment, Mon? Uh, we just like to basically confirm we have reached an agreement with respect to providing the facilities. Um, this um, this agreement will enable DUST to set up and operate a PH OpenIX node inside the PLDT Vitro Data Center. Uh, that will provide additional resiliency for the PH OpenIX because it gives them an additional point, as well as uh, facilitate uh, future d discussions and progress on bilateral peering arrangements. So the, as per the request of the USD, the fiber is uh, being, uh, and the co-location facilities is uh, being used for free. Okay, thank you, Mon. So we'll, we'll wait for this to happen next week, no? and hopefully in our next hearing, we can already, um, kung may checklist tayo ng mga kailangan mangyari, hopefully we can already tick this off no, and say that this was already accomplished. No? But uh, definitely, the first step is the, the actual fiber line. No? And then the second one is really the router configuration to really allow for the peering to happen. No? So, bantayan natin yan with um, our friends from DOST. Uh, yes, Ms. Tamano. Uh, just, just to add, ah, yes, um, go ahead. The, the fiber link will have a lifetime of two years. Then after okay. two years, uh, renegotiation. Okay, so the MOA is for two years. Yep. Okay, at least we can see the the uh, uh, results now for two years, and hopefully that will the results will be substantial, and we can really uh, support this even more. No, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to add on the regarding the free Wi-Fi because yes. we we joined the bid and we won some of the bids. So I would like just to inform the body that uh, on the uh, middle mile, we were awarded 10% because we were able to join only on 10% because there is uh, a bandwidth available. Now, we are surprised why uh, the telcos did not join the bid on the middle mile. They only joined the bid on the first mile in which I understand Globe won the bid. But it is really impossible for us to continue the bidding on the uh, last mile uh, because we uh, telcos did not join the middle mile bidding. So we are prepared for the last mile. Most of the cable operators, us, will be the one to bid in the last mile. But we were able to bid in 100 sites. That is only 10% because there are more than 900 sites. And we are only can bid on the uh, 10% uh, because it's supposed to be telco should bid on the middle mile, but nobody bid in the 
middle mile. So that's why, according to USEC Assembly, they will uh, reschedule the rebidding on the middle mile so that we can have the access to join on the last mile uh, bidding. Thank right. you, Your Honor. Kasi ho, you're, you, you represent the groups which are in the homes, di ba? That's why kayo po yung last mile. Yes. But you're saying that yung middle tsaka yung first, kailangan may mag-bid din doon. Yes. Right, no? Mr. Pagal is actually on top of this project, no? So we will ask him to give comments later. Uh, of course, we want to see this project work. So you can respond po to that, no? If indeed there are deficiencies in the, in the, uh, project, uh, the project layout, no? But before that, I'd like to ask... Um, so I think you're still preparing your presentation, no, Mr. Pagal. Yeah. So while we give you some time, I'd like to go to Secretary Balisaka. No, Secretary, you know we're um, we're very happy that you're here. Um, care to comment oh, on on what we've heard so far? I think the question is: There's been talk about government spending for internet, um, the the development of um, uh, our economy and its correlation to availability of broadband and speed of broadband. W would, would NEDA have any initial, just initial comments po on, on our discussion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for inviting me uh, uh, to this uh, uh, hearing. Uh, I was very pleased to hear uh, the discussions, and uh, uh, I would like to, uh, to, to uh, provide a, a, a context uh, the discussion, especially the importance of the topic uh, on the Philippine economy. Uh, as you may know, uh, globally, uh, the key drivers to uh, uh, to growth, uh, uh, growth in terms of trade or, 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 or finance or, or goods, uh, has come from uh, two, two, uh, two uh, forces. Uh, one is from uh, ICT, the, the revolution in the ICT and the innovations that, that, that uh, ICT uh, uh, tag along. The other one is globalization. These two forces shape the fortune of nations uh, in the last uh, uh, three to four decades. Uh, now, in the Philippines, uh, the, 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 the Philippine Development Plan that the Aquino administration crafted uh, uh, for uh, 2011 to 2016 uh, built on the uh, on the premise that what co has constrained the the economy uh, uh, over the uh, for the so many decades was number one is the very poor infrastructure uh, that we have had and. A, a Part of that infrastructure is your ICT. Okay. Um, now, uh, it is uh, as it was clear to us uh, that uh, then th when we are crafting that plan, that the only way to go for the economy is to improve substantially the efficiency uh, 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 in which we produce goods and services, we transact, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. It's efficiency, productivity. That's the key. Uh, we have had, we have uh, 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 labor, we have capital, but uh, uh, the returns to labor, returns to capital are very low. We have to get efficiency, uh, productivity uh, rise rapidly to 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 improve uh, the well-being of our people. And for that to happen, in, um, as I said, I infrastructure is, is key. And ICT is a, a, a major uh, uh, um, concern that was uh, mentioned in the uh, in the uh, plan, and and why uh, ICT? Because as I said, uh, uh, we n we need to get productivity going, uh, uh, improve. We need to reduce the cost of, of producing goods and services, uh, uh, and 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 therefore uh, uh, would be able to compete. Uh, more effectively uh, uh, with our neighbors, uh, not only in terms of goods, but also in terms of, of, uh, of services. Now, um, I said earlier that the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the future for our economy, uh, uh, for our can economy to sustain its rapid growth of, uh, of uh, 6 to 7% uh, in the coming uh, 
uh, say two to three decades, uh, which is you know, the, the period that we, we would need to catch up with our neighbors uh, so that we can join the ranks of uh, uh, what we call the developed countries. Uh, uh, we, would need, we would need to invest aggressively, massively in, in infrastructure, and ICT is one. And I'm just so, I'm just so concerned about the presentation of GRACE uh, as I was looking at those numbers because the high cost of the internet, the high uh, and the very low uh, 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 speed, is constraining uh, that capacity of the economy to achieve a, uh, a faster, faster growth. We really need to do something about that because uh, 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 it is, as I said, it's a major driver uh, for uh, driver growth, but even more importantly, it's a major, it's a great equalizer. If you want inclusive growth, if you want our uh, backward uh, areas, uh, lagging areas, to benefit from uh, uh, the growth, we need to to get information accessible to them. Uh, you know, it, uh, as I was telling my students at UP, uh, 10 years ago, I had a comparative advantage giving a lecture. But you know, I'm losing my comparative advantage because they can easily access even better lectures from Harvard, from MIT, you know. They don't need me to, uh, to, 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 to be present in classrooms. Uh, but if we can make that, uh, that pa those possibilities also for uh, our poor people, uh, uh, for uh, those outside of Metro Manila and far-flung areas, then you have developed a, a very effective tool for uh, achieving inclusive growth. Uh, so I cannot uh, overemphasize that. Uh, ICT is a key driver to efficiency, to productivity growth, and also a very strong uh, force for achieving inclusive growth. Uh, we are, as you know, you are very challenged with inclusive growth. Uh, uh, and we do think that uh, this is a major area that I is quite, uh, I, c I would consider a, uh, a, a low-lying fruit uh, because We've got the, the basics. Uh, uh, I, I think I would come back to what was mentioned uh, earlier, uh, that the four items that you mentioned, uh, and Hiti mentioned earlier is moving forward. Uh, uh, we definitely need to get the private sector in, invest massively in, uh, in, uh, in, in broadband, in connectivity, to get the speed uh, uh, at least at the levels of our neighbors. Uh, uh, we also need to get competition uh, uh, also enhanced in, in, the, in the industry. I don't think that there is a good room for achieving that. I was asking the, com the commissioner a while ago to what, uh, uh, what NTC has in terms of regulatory power to ensure that competition is, uh, is strengthened in the industry to reduce the cost. Because, you know, the, uh, the, the, the cost of internet use in this country is very high, as was clearly uh, shown and uh, many of the information that we have the data that we have that you could uh, double triple the the, the, the penetration uh, b by if you can uh, if you can just reduce those costs to levels comparable in our neighbors uh, that you cannot be more inclusive than that uh, when our people are able to acquire uh, uh, information on wha where to sell their goods where to send their uh, 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 their children to school, where to get the information for, for the day, and so on and so forth. No? Um, so I, ho we ca I hope we can do, the, so do something about the, about the competition environment. Uh, and we need to look at, at, uh, uh, at the areas where that can be uh, enhanced. The, I also mentioned that this uh, ICT is a powerful uh, instrument for achieving inclusive growth. What that means then is that there is a big role for government. Uh, uh, that uh, ICT should not be left alone to, uh, or ICT development should not be left alone to, uh, to the private sector. I do see a very good uh, uh, case for subsidizing access to information through ICT of far flung areas, for example. I am not, of course, ready to say that government should go into providing backbones, but uh, there must be a way to engage with the private sector so that we can 
make that uh, ICT access uh, 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 workable even for the far, far flung areas and the poorest of the poor. Uh, uh, perhaps cross subsidization will do, perhaps government can simply put up a uh, universal access fund. If that's what your idea of universal access fund, I, I would completely uh, uh, support that. For example, uh, in many countries like uh, India today or I Indonesia today, uh, elementary schools have access, almost full access to, to internet. You know, our penetration in, in school is very low. This is where exactly government can get in and get the private sector, perhaps buy bandwidth there. As I said, you don't have to ca to to, to uh, build the, the backbone ourselves. You can work with the private sector, but we have to make sure that the private sector is also working in a competitive environment so that the cost is uh, is uh, uh, fair and uh, and uh, and just for, uh, uh, for all. No, so that's my 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 take, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. I I um, I see the the, the both direct and uh, indirect uh, role that government can play to uh, uh, to uh, improve access to connectivity. And finally, may I just mention here that uh, in our 2016 uh, budget, uh, a proposed budget, uh, uh, the ICT, the budget for ICT uh, as presented the by, uh, by the uh, uh, economic managers uh, last week uh, here, uh, would increase from uh, 1.76 billion pesos in 2014 to 4.37 billion pesos for 2016. That's quite a big uh, increase, but uh, I think uh, we should have more given that uh, the, 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 the backlogs uh, in, uh, in access to ICT. Mr. Chairman, I would really would like to, to pitch for this because this is a, uh, if you want inclusivity, the tool for achieving that is here. It, it's, a, uh, it's a low lying fruit, as I said. All you need is a few billion more and we can get that information accessible to, to, to all of our people. And that would improve governance, that would improve uh, uh, health, education, and so on. The externalities uh, are, are quite huge. Secretary, thank you, thank you for that. No? Uh, what you had mentioned, Una, four billion, that's with the DOST budget, right? Uh, ah, okay, so it's for the whole government infrastructure. Uh, later on, no, we'll ask uh, Mr. Pagal regarding um, the initiatives of government to, to spread uh, free internet. But, uh, Secretary, we'd like to thank you for, for your comments, and um, we're, we're quite uh, validated no, with uh, many of the comments that you've, sa you've, you've said. Uh, from the beginning, we've really contended that fast internet is really, um, or, or uh, workable internet infrastructure is needed for our further economic growth. No? But Mon, just a second, no? um, let me just also put you on the spot here, Secretary. Would you be willing to help the other agencies here, especially NTC, come up with a development plan uh, with regard to how to move forward with uh, our internet infrastructure? And I think they asked for an interagency support. Uh, would NEDA be interested to, to take the lead or, or play a more um, active role in um, creating that roadmap for our internet infrastructure? We'll be happy to help, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. In fact, uh, uh, next year, 2016, um, we'll be crafting already the next medium-term plan, so uh, 2017 to, for, to 2022. This is a big, a, a good opportunity to really put into, uh, into the plan a, 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 an aggressive stance on and ICT access, and, uh, and we hope that we can get our acts together to, we have a, a chapter in the PDP and we can make that, uh, that chapter even stronger. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes, Mon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'd like to thank the NEDA Director General for highlighting some of the key policy issues. Now. Particularly, I'd like to focus in on the question of the need for major massive investments actually in ICT infrastructure. I remember at the first hearing of this of this committee, uh, I think NTC made a presentation. Their calculation of how much it would take in order to achieve 80% penetration of two Mbps broadband uh, in Philippine households. And if I recall correctly, the number that they came up with was something like 746 billion pesos. Mm -hmm. And that's only for 80% at two Mbps. Yeah. 
I, I, well, we can debate about what the actual numbers will be, <laughs> but I think there will all be. We agree it's a high number. It's going to okay. be a high number. Mm -hmm. So I think the key question at the end of the day is um, we, the country will have to have to make very substantial investments here. Yeah. And, and uh, go ahead, just, just to finish my thought, Mr. Chairman, is that, well, a number of policy, uh, policy suggestions, recommendations have been made. Um, for example, government investing itself in ICT infrastructure. I think since this is already in the, on, on, on this in discussion, we should also consider something that has, has not yet been mentioned. Uh, there are no private sector incentives now for investment in, in, in ICT infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no current program in that area. Uh, and that kind of, in my view, of course, you would ex understand where yeah. I'm coming from, it seems to be a something that seems to be puzzling why there is no such provision for that kind of uh, thank, uh, program. Thank you, Mono. In fact, I, I think the Universal Access Fund um, suggestion of NTC is pointing to that, no? that uh, there's a fund that we can access to support um, uh, improved access in the Philippines. To be honest, no, we, we sort of uh, took five hearings to get to this point because, as we all know, the last time a national broadband was suggested, no, it was actually mired in a lot of scandal. No? And, uh, you know, before we went straight there, we wanted to at least lay the foundation of how important this uh, infrastructure is with regard to the economy and with regard to the progress of our country. But now that nandito na tayo on our fifth hearing, and, uh, you know, the MC, we, we thank the NTC for the MC, but that's really more of a consumer protection issue. The IP peering, which uh, the Philippine Open Exchange has been working on with the telco partners, is will help latency and will help a little bit. But, you know, the dramatic increase in speed, um, for me, I think goes back to either a uh, market intervention, which is competition, or and or uh, government investment. And if you look at countries like uh, Japan, the U.S., Korea, uh, all these countries with increased internet, or higher internet than us, there was a significant um, uh, government intervention no? with regard to either a fund, a cross-subsidy, or, or government actually laying out the, the fiber themselves or, or, or other types of intervention. But the point is, uh, their governments said, uh, mahalagang tumaya dito kasi mahalaga to para sa ating kinabukasan. No? And I think that's something where uh, the discussion is leading there, no? and uh, it's good that the Secretary is here. We can start that discussion. In fact, uh, if, if this were to continue, if our hearings were to continue, we, I would like to shift towards solutions already, no? solutions that we can all be part of. And of course, Secretary Balisakan will be important to those discussions. So thank you for, for raising that, no? Mon Salamat. So we're, gonna, we're almost done. Uh, I, I see that we have 16 minutes left. So we'll ask Mr. Pagal to give an update on the free Wi-Fi project. He uh, is part of the ICTO group of DOST, which is handling this. Then later, uh, since we're on uh, live stream now, I'd like to read some uh, Twitter comments and questions that people can, can answer. No? And then we can end for today and uh, suspend again. So Mr. Pagal, you have the floor. Yes, please proceed. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, okay. what I have here is the mostly on the procurement side of the project. So, what we'll see right here would be um, for the IAPT, we're just supposed to be, we just supposed to be uh, open the bid, or it's already advertised. Um, for the domestic uh, bids, these are the ones that are connecting our data center from Metro Manila to the uh, POPs. Uh, it's already awarded. Then we're, uh, we're, we have ongoing post-qual for the IPTSC, IPTM, and IPTSMC. These are the main components which are directly co uh, connected to the sites. As you can see, uh, for IAPT and IPTD, uh, this is the international and domestic. Uh, almost 100% of the sites already, of the lots are already bidded. But for IPTSC, these are the cities, it's only just 56% of the total lots. Then for IPTM, these are the municipalities. We only have 10% for that. Lawrence, no, let me cut you first. Yeah. Uh, the list of the areas that will uh, that, that ICTO will cover, uh, what, what was the main criteria for these areas? And are these areas readily available to the public para malaman nila? Yes. Uh, for, the, for the free public Wi-Fi, basically these areas are the class three, four, five, six municipalities. Um, we have focused on the municipal plazas, which are mostly open to the public. Also, we considered around f uh, 43 cities, which are all uh, either ma major cities in, C in Cebu and Davao, and also uh, for the 14 pops, which we will be using as uh, tra traffic aggregation for the traffic from the municipalities. Are, is this list set already? I mean, nakalista na kung ano yung mga yes. areas ito. Where can we find that list? Uh, uh, it's supposed to be in the ICTO website. Okay, uh, yes. so we can go to the ICTO website and find out kung ano yung mga area na yan, no? Yes. Okay, and what is the, um, what is the uh, quality of service that we are uh, promising the people who will receive uh, this type of free Wi-Fi? Okay. Um, since most of the links, uh, connectivity links, will be from the uh, con commercial side, we will be expecting an SLA of about 99% from them. That's the bare, the bare minimum for the Sorry, SLA. Sorry, 99% of the time, it's up. Yes, correct. And at what quality? At uh, what speed? Well, uh, we have a committed before that's uh, around 256. That's a com CIR committed. Okay, so uh, minimum. That's the minimum. 256 kbps, 99% yes. of the time. Yes. And uh, that can go as high as what? Or are you capped at 256 kbps? Well, it depends on the. We have several tiers for the uh, authentication. So basically, if you have, uh, you can, you will only register your Mac, Mac address. You will only get around 30, 30 to 50 Mbps. Ah, no, MB megabytes for con as consumption. Consum ah, so may limit rin yung volume yes. per day. Yeah, per yes. day. Yes. Okay. And uh, then for for the two other tiers, we don't have limits for them, but rather we have different whitelist and blacklist sites for them. Okay. How do you determine who's on the whitelist and who's on the blacklist? Uh, currently, there are NIG, the policy making body of our department is currently checking checking it out sir okay so kung may nakita tayong DOST ICTO free wifi we can expect that there is service 99% of the time minimum 256 and if we don't qualify for the higher tiers i guess this is mga nag sign up or 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 yes. nag log in yes sir may cap tayo na 30 mb yes sir Okay, and that's part of the contract with the private sector. Yes, sir. And then yung private sector, uh, the telcos bid out for this and the ISPs bid out for this? Yes, they did. Yes, so you wouldn't know. Kung in, kunyari, in this area that's uh, coming from PLDT or coming from Globe or coming from a local ISP, you wouldn't know, no? Basta as long as they're providing the service for these areas. Yes, correct, sir. Okay. Uh, we're not aiming for higher than 256. Um, it's the bare, uh, it's the minimum, sir, for okay. the service. Also, we already. I also want to say that uh, on the side of the access points, we're looking at 95% availability, availability for the access points. Meaning? So that could be 
that that what that would push push the I mean 95 percent of the time it will be available for the access point. Oh, sorry, I don't know what that means. Uh, sorry, so you have uh, to no, what I'm uh, in layman's the, in layman's terms. The device we use to uh, access Wi-Fi. Okay, it, that's the access point. So basically, what we're looking at for the bids will be around 95 percent availability. So. Yeah, that's the committed. F that's the commitment for the whoever. Uh, meaning, for even the point. the router or the access points should be up ninety five percent of the yes, time. Yes, correct, sir. Okay, so, okay, so I think the mahalaga sa taong bayan is to, to to find out, ma malaman natin kung saan yung mga areas na to. Yes, sir. Although, syempre, yung mga kababayan natin in those areas, wala naman silang internet, so nirin nila malalaman sa website niyo, di ba? But I'm sure you're coordinating with the local government units. Yes, actually, sir, we have a joint memorandum circular and also an MOU with the ILG. Mm -hmm. That's ongoing discussion. I, I think it's already pre signed by uh, the ILG. Secretary. Okay, last question. In your rollout schedule, when will the. I guess you're doing this by batch or, or sabay sabay bato? Uh, no, sir. If if you would look at the procurement schedule mm -hmm. I have I have presented, we we're looking at um, yeah. Okay. So if we're gonna look at the SMA services on the column of services SMA, that's supposed to be the hardware provider. Um, we're looking at it almost uh, almost the end of the year. Okay. But it's very critical that uh, the IP transport must be bidded out since almost it's just 10 percent 12 percent for the key bids uh, I see so everything needs to be a hundred percent for this to roll out properly yes uh, for example currently we only have 56 percent for the IPTSC uh, 10 percent for the IPTM and 12 per percent for the IPT SMC um, if you're gonna look at my table on the lower left of the screen uh, you look at that's already the number of sites which are affected by the which uh, which bids are already in the post qual process. So if you'll see, it's just uh, 1,215 uh, compared to almost 7,000 beneficiary sites which we are targeting for this project. I see. So problem yeah. problem at all. Well, uh, yes, but well, uh, if you're gonna look at it, sir, we have uh, time for a second procurement for the the rest of the sites. Okay, let me just ask about the IPTS MC, because union 12%. What is that? What is the IPTS MC? Okay, IPTS MC will be the uh, bids uh, located in the central area of a municipality, almost the population. Okay, uh, and yeah. walang nagbid para dyan? Uh, to, to, to that's basically setting up the access points well, sir, and everything. Meron naman po, pero almost 12% 12. 12 of the lots were, were just the only ones bidded out. Yeah, uh, so which means... No, I mean, which were one. Ah, okay, so is, is the problem the, the process of bidding out or yung mga nagbibid, yung problema? Kulang yung mga nagbibid? Well, uh, medyo nagkukulang po dun sa bids. Uh, and what type of organizations would usually bid for this type of uh, service? For the IP transport, it's usually the telcos and the cable... Pro eh, yeah. Okay, so yes, ma'am. Uh, the reason being that uh, we cannot bid because all or nothing. Like, let's say, for instance, the, uh, uh, the 12%. So we have cable operators there and willing to uh, connect only to some 10% areas because our uh, cable lines are only lo located I in see. 10%. Kailangan but lahat. then, kailangan lahat. So we cannot join. So that is the reason. Yeah, but I guess for ease of uh, management ng DOST, gusto ho nila yung buong area, no? I guess that's the reason, right? Okay, let, let me ask the telcos, um, are you aware of this program or have you been invited to bid? Are you planning to engage? Uh, or is this a losing proposition kaya ayaw niyong mag-bid? Mag are, are you buying uh, the bandwidth at a lower rate? Meron bang, uh, Lawrence, is the price of the bandwidth um, a negotiated rate? Uh, usually the ABC for this is uh, already... Uh, for the first, for the initial procurement, it's uh, almost the market. Almost the market price. Yes, market okay. price. So, hindi naman binabarat yung ano. So, yes, go ahead, Roy. Uh, uh, Your Honor, we've, we've, we've been uh, participating in the bid conferences and uh, we actually uh, attempted to bid on the first lot, I think, no? but uh, unfortunately, for one reason or the other, we, we weren't able to, to, to get it. But uh, we, are, we, we, we are attending all the pre-bid conferences, um, uh, Your Honor. 
All right. So there's a commit and Globe, are you ano? Uh, for Globe, your honor, I think we won in uh, one lot. Uh, I think, but as for the rest, uh, can I get back to you? Uh, okay, sure. The week, Ronald, so I can check with our management. Thank you. Okay, so mukha namang they want to bid. Uh, sila, Mr. Mano, the cable operators, their, their issue is that they can't handle whole areas, no? Um, so, Kasi do we have, ano? So, sorry, Mama, let me ask Lawrence. So, are you confident that by the end of the year, we can have this up and running, uh, Lawrence? Yes, uh, especially with the telcos and ma'am giving their commitment to the project. All right. Okay. All right. So let me uh, thank everyone. We have four minutes left. Let me try to read lang a few, uh, a few Twitter comments and suggestions. This is from anyone can answer, no? Uh, at Kalayaan 1898. Parang edsa lang. Parang may traffic ang peg ng internet. Mabilis sa madaling araw, mabagal pag may araw, sabi niya. So edsa daw yung ano. Um, Senator from AJD23, Senator Bamakino should formulate the National Broadband Commission to ensure the quality of broadband defendants. Meron ba tayong national? That's the NTC, right? Do we have a separate National Broadband Commission? I don't think uh, we do. Uh, actually, uh, can I uh, answer? Yes. Sure, actually, the NTC is the regulator, but uh, we would maybe need uh, a body which would be uh, implementing the projects for, for internet and broadband. like. Like, I think right now it's the DOSC that's doing that. Okay. Well, during your interagency and um, Commissioner Liel, I hope you can take the lead with Secretary Balisakan to convene uh, the inputs of NED that would be important. The inputs of DOST, of course, would also be important as well as DTI, you know, in terms of the e-commerce side. Um, the next time we see each other, we'd like to see solutions, no? And one mentioned that there's uh, probably a need to revisit our incentives and policies to work with the private sector. Uh, let's take a look at this and hopefully we can go, uh, we can expand your moving forward slide that you presented earlier. No? If I'm not mistaken, there was a um, call for interagency support, a universal access fund. Um, uh, there were a few other points there. Yes, go ahead, Leah. Um, uh, first, uh, first is the creation of an interagency body with Congress uh, to study the government intervention in putting up infrastructure to increase internet speed and penetration. Second is to increase the penalty for violations of RA 7925 and NTC. So that's an amendment of the Public Service Act. Third would be to classify internet as a basic service, which it is, it is right now. Creation of a universal access fund, number four. And fifth would be the reassess the nationality requirement for telcos. Because sure, in other countries, uh, even China has already relaxed this. They're, they can be 100% foreign-owned, even in China. Yeah, yes. there's actually a question here about that. No, bakit daw ang China, which is a communist country, allows for this? Um, why does former communist country like China have cheaper VOIP rates versus democracy like Philippines? They don't. They don't have cheaper VOIP rates. No, that's not true. They have cheaper. Maybe they have cheaper internet, but not necessarily VOIP rates. All right. Um, okay. So we have other questions here. I think most of these were answered. The man in the hearing. Sa Saudi po, ang only 4G mas mura. So, meron tayong uh, nakaabang from Saudi Arabia, si Felum Bamba. Uh, from Mao Santo, sabi niya, uh, did, did you not promise to amend RA7925? I guess we're at that point where we need to really amend 7925. Although I, I predict classifying internet as a basic uh, service might be... Uh, has its pros and cons. Si Secretary Balisakan is nodding his head. Um, nodding his head in the negative, no? Or, pagano'n eh. Diba? So, no, I think what you want to give a comment on that, sir? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. I think uh, if we can enhance the competi competitive environment, the, uh, the climate for uh, competition in the sector, there's no need to classify that as a basic service. See, Mr. Winthrop is uh, nodding his head. So even from the civil society groups, you don't agree that internet should be a basic service? Uh, you, you, you disagree. So, nga, who is for basic service? Grace? Yeah, can you just uh, give a few comments, uh, Kiko? And th the part of it that classifies this as a basic service, no? if, if we do that, then we get power at least no? to get no, the, all the obstacles against Putting standards, service standards, at least they get removed. No. 
On the other hand, no, the, the flip side, I think, and we've been discussing this for some time, is that if you make it a basic service, then you have to, they have to jump through hoops to get even the accreditation. No, and, and if the, the franchise and certificate of public convenience and necessity, if we are able to get the bureaucratic process out of the way and make that uh, certification painless and get also the uh, regulatory environment in place, then I don't see a reason why we should uh, hesitate from moving forward and classifying it as a basic, basic service. service. Winthrop, would you like to give a comment from the Internet Society, Inc.? Um, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we believe that there is still room for enhancing uh, competition, for enlarging the space, no? for, for participation at several segments for internet provision, uh, especially if we do a bit more uh, geographic uh, decentralization. So I th uh, th our view is actually very close to the NEDAS, Secretary General's, in that when, when we're asking the telcos to provide a better service, what can the regulator do? No? If, if, that, if the regulator wants to stop the telco or operator from doing something, they pull on a string. If the telco wants the operator to do something, they cannot push on a string. No? Hindi, hindi, hindi kasalanan ng regulator yan. So an example would be the case of, for example, no bids for the middle mile for free Wi-Fi. Uh, can the regulator, regulator do anything to compel the telcos to bid? They cannot. No? So we, I would prefer, we would prefer to see competitive uh, solutions rather than behavioral or restraining solutions. So basically, Winthrop, we're saying that kumbaga sa pendulum, one way is to heighten the market competition and basically leave it to a robust private sector. The other way is to heighten regulation and allow government to step in even more. I, yun yung dalawang pinag-uusapan, no? Uh, Kiko and then Mon. Um, we believe no, that a fine line can be threaded between the two variables. And if we cannot sacrifice naman competition just because we want better regulation. Now, competition is still the most efficient way to do it. But in cases like this where we have a duopoly and regulation is a necessity, then there has to be a point where okay, we say, we, okay, we step in now. But at some point, then we, we can say we can step back, let the market do its thing. Yeah, but the slippery slope, because we step in now, you know, mm. to be frank. Uh, Mon, mm. go yeah. ahead. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, again, there are many pros and cons to this discussion, but uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, at the end of the day, we have to invest. Yeah. So a policy regime that promotes investment in this vital sector, I, say, I think, is the anchor of any um, movement forward. All right. Grace? Yes. Thank you, Mon. As a follow-up to what uh, Mr. Winthrop, you said, um, if we make internet into a basic service, then you're, you have heavy regulation. And you don't, you don't encourage investments, more investments, in a heavily regulated industry. What you want is to encourage more players to come in, and how do you do that? You have to ease some aspects of regulation. And you have to create, basically you regulate for competition. What you do is to create a more competitive market environment. So I, I, I have not seen any, any industry where you know, heavy regulation resulted in higher better services or, yes, higher competition. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. We have two uh, comments. Si Juan Gomez says that the Public Service Act must be amended. And uh, we agree. And um, uh, hopefully NTC can give us a draft uh, with regard to what aspects of the Public Service Act may need to be amended. Uh, Johan Bautista says, what happened to increasing penalties against airing telcos? NTC can only do so much. That's part of the Public Service Act. That's also part of the Consumer Act. No? Uh, we, we're, the Consumer Act is actually under my committee. So we're already talking to Attorney Di Magiba and Secretary Domingo regarding the amendments to the Consumer Act. With regard to the Public Service Act, that won't go to my committee. But um, I would be happy to sponsor or, or file the bill no? um, once we're able to see the amendments to that. Uh, according to Pau, uh, Pau underscore, I'm not sure if this is LAN or law, improving the infrastructure is first as it is the foundation from which further improvements will follow. I think that's pretty clear. How do we improve the infrastructure, I think, is something that we need to discuss further. Um, 
The nationality from Paulo Robles, the nationality requirement of telcos only deters their global competitive competitiveness. Why not just do away with it? Is that the constitutional... Uh, that's in the Constitution, no, Secretary? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. It is in the Constitution. Yeah. So it, it would mean a constitutional change? And you feel it? Okay, let me point out a, uh, a question for the lawyers here and for the constitutionalists. If the internet is not a basic service, then is it in the constitutionally protected industries? Because we're debating whether the internet uh, is a basic service or a value-added service. If it's not a basic service, and we all agreed it's a value-added service, then does it fall under the constitutionally protected... Uh, so let's ask, I want to ask Secretary, then we'll go to the telcos. Yes, Secretary, do you have an answer to that? Or would you prefer to let the constitutionalists debate on that? Let the I would let the lawyers debate on that. Okay, so the lawyers, Attorney Ibai. Mr. Chair, I think uh, there, there won't be a problem for a, uh, probably a foreign company no, to, to render the value-added service. In fact, uh, there are value-added service providers, content providers, that register with the NTC to provide value-added service. I think the problem there is only the public telecommunication entities are authorized to set up networks that provide internet access. The value-added internet service providers can only ride on the infrastructure uh, rolled out by the PTEs. So that's still, uh, yeah. and, and that infrastructure is constitutionally protected. Yes. Is, is that the sure. same thing, uh, Mr. Casino, uh, Attorney Casino? Uh, agree with the attorney Ibai, Your Honor. As a matter right. of fact, even if a company uh, offers uh, internet services, just the same if uh, the services are offered to the public, the same can still be considered as a public telecommunications entity. So, therefore, it must comply with the 6040 rule under the Constitution, Your Honor. Okay. But ako, ako, I'm just going to raise this issue, and maybe NTC in our next, maybe in the budget hearing, you can give some comments regarding this, because if one is a basic service, no, if one is a value-added service, uh, and therefore we cannot regulate, but then they have all the protection of a regulated industry, parang there seems to be a, a, a need for a clarification there. No? Maybe that's something we can discuss uh, later on. But um, Definitely, I think it's something up for debate. No? The whole constitutional provision on 6040 is already up for debate as it is. No? Attorney Roy. Again, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, I think the regulated aspect only for PTEs is the, vis -vis is the setting up of the infrastructure, which is the network. Ah, that's right. So what you're saying is uh, providing internet per se is not constitutionally protected, but to do that, you need the network, which is constitutionally protected. Yes. That's what you're saying. Okay, maybe we can... Um, uh, try to study this further also in the next hearings. Uh, all right, so we'd like to thank also all of the uh, our, our, our friends on Twitter who sent their comments. We'll try to um, compile these comments as well, but palagi ko naman most of the issues were discussed. So let me thank uh, everyone for, for coming again today. Maraming salamat sa inyong pagpunta. Uh, thank you for your patience and uh, thank you for always attending our hearings and to the public, of course, who are always... Um, waiting and looking for uh, both quick and long-term wins from these hearings. Uh, at the minimum, the memorandum circular has been, um, has been issued already. That should help a lot in terms of our consumer protection, our telcos. Thank you for uh, uh, stating that you will comply with these new rules and regulations. Uh, we're hoping Mr. Lara will have a smile on his face next time he's here, so, and the IPP ring issues can be settled. We were really hoping that we would have this settled before this hearing, but if we have to wait another week, then we'll just announce it later on once that's settled already. In the next time we see each other, uh, hopefully we can talk about the solutions, no? uh, long-term solutions. Um, so far, yung lumalabas, and Secretary Balisakan mentioned this, the first is really increasing competition. The second one is looking at our infrastructure, and our friends from the private sector have said that um, they're quite open for government to, to partner and then come in and see how we can... Uh, improve our internet infrastructure, much like other countries around us have done. In fact, I think that's something practically everyone agrees on, no? uh, from NTC to our agencies to our civil society partners. 
uh, panahon na tumaya ang uh, gobyerno pagating sa pagpapaganda ng ating internet. So, let me thank you again for coming. Maraming maraming salamat po. We're going to suspend the hearing and we'll be calling for a TWG to flesh out these um, solutions. Hopefully, in our next next time we see each other, we can present these solutions which are which we all agree on. And tama tama, it's the budget season, so it would be a good time to look at budgets again, or even prepare for the medium-term development plan which uh, Neda will be crafting by next year. So again, thank you very much. Marami salamat. Uh, see you again soon. Salamat po. Hi everyone, please feel free to finish your lunch if you're still available to stay. Thank you.